All right. Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to this uh, lunchtime bite session, I suppose, on the Windows Azure platform. Uh, thank you very much for giving up some of your lunch time. Um, hopefully just about 20 minutes to give you some flavor. My two basic assumptions here are that uh, you're developers and that you don't know anything about Windows Azure yet. Um, I think the first one's pretty, pretty clear, given that we're at Dev Week. Um, and, uh, but if you're already familiar with Windows Azure, then, well, sit back and relax and do something else. Um, essentially, just that, just that 20 minutes, then, to give you a very quick overview. I uh, work in a group called the Developer and Platform Group, as it says there. Um, I'm the product manager for Azure in, inside that group. Um, so I spend about a third of my life uh, talking specifically and doing things specifically with Windows Azure. Uh, or rather, the Windows Azure platform. And the Windows Azure platform describes it in its entirety. Windows Azure is one specific bit of the Windows Azure platform, but we'll get to that. So let's start out. Um, the, uh, the, one of the basic ways of describing the Windows Azure platform is it's a platform as a service solution. And what that really means is that we as developers, when we're building applications, we can focus on the application and the rest we don't have to worry about. That's sort of the idea. We can just think about the application itself. And we, can, we update our own application, if you like. We manage our application, um, but everything else is done for us. So for example, uh, the networking, of course, is provided there automatically, and the IP addresses and all those kind of things, and the endpoints are set up. We tell the system what we want, but it just enables it for us. Um, things like load balancing, network load balancing, all that kind of stuff, as you sort of might expect, that's all part of uh, the solution inside there. Storage, um, whether it's uh, file-based storage and so on, of course, there's a storage solution inside there. The server hardware, well, you probably wouldn't expect to worry about that, but of course, you don't have to. Uh, the virtualization infrastructure, you don't need to know that it's running and using virtualization to implement it. It happens to be, um, but it's part of, the, part of the solution. Of course, the operating system itself, uh, the Windows Azure team will manage the operating system. Um, they'll update it as, a pro as, as needs be. Or you can specifically say, you know what, don't update it. Just leave it as it is now. I've tested it. I don't want to change anything. Or you can just let the system just keep it up to date all the time. Um, databases, there is a SQL Server in the cloud. SQL Azure is a, a relational data store, obviously, in the cloud. And things like security and integration. So the ability, for example, to sign in with a Windows Live ID or a Google ID or a Facebook ID um, or a Yahoo ID. You know, that's one of the services that's included as part of the infrastructure. The user comes along, you enable it, um, and, and the system works it for you, as it were. Um, and, of course, and runtimes. We include the ASP.NET runtime as part of Windows Azure. But actually, for those that want to, they, you can put in a, you know, a PHP runtime, or you can put a Java runtime in it, or a Rails runtime, or pretty much whatever runtime you like that'll run on a Windows infrastructure. And then uh, application services. So things like caching, or CDN, or content delivery network, or service bus, which is like an enterprise service model. Uh, a, whole, a whole series of services. And there was a session here earlier on at the conference um, on App Fabric. If you didn't know anything about, about Azure and you went to the App Fabric session, it was probably a, um, a bit of an odd session. Um, but fundamentally, that's the sort of application infrastructure part of Windows Azure. And it's just a, you know, a set of services that are available as part of it. And a, and a few things it does. Obviously, if your application crashes, you know, the system will just restart it. Um, redundancy. So for example, when you put things in storage, Windows Azure automatically creates three copies of everything. And it copies them across different nodes and across different you know, uh, fault-tolerant environments. So you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. The infrastructure just makes sure that your application stays there and your data stays there. Um, load balancing, of course, we sort of already mentioned that. But uh, if you're building a web application, then you're fundamentally a stateless application. So you know, we'll, we'll just load balance automatically. You've got one instance. That's easy. But if you've got 50 instances, we'll do the right thing in that environment as well. And sort of related to all of those things is the idea of failover. You know, if someone's running on you know, a particular node and something happens to it, um, then it just you know, a new one gets started and the user just gets moved automatically, all that kind of stuff. So really, the idea is that you, know, you focus on the application, you write the application, um, use, a, use a decent architecture for a service-based application, and the system does the rest. That's kind of the idea. Um, oh, a couple of bonus items inside there, things like the data marketplace. 
So there's a model inside the Azure platform for providing data and selling data, essentially. So you provide a, a, a data service. In the UK, an obvious example, they're not using this model right now, but an obvious example would be postcodes. You know, the post office might choose to use this kind of model to sell postcode data. Um, and then there's also an idea of an application marketplace. So if you publish a service, then you can you know, publish it in the app marketplace and people can find it and buy it or whatever is appropriate. So that's the, the, what, you know, one way of looking at it. There's, I, suppose, I suppose a more official way of looking at it, which is that there is a part of the Windows Azure platform called Windows Azure, and that has you know, drives and storage and tables and all that kind of stuff as part of it. There's a piece that is SQL Azure, so that's where the relational database piece comes in. And it is literally SQL Server running in the cloud. Um, the App Fabric, so there was an App Fabric session here earlier in the week. The uh, App Fabric really is that infrastructure, uh, or rather, excuse me, application infrastructure, application runtime kind of set of elements like the service bus, like integration, like composite applications, like CDN, like um, uh, caching, and so on. And then finally, as I mentioned, there's the marketplace. And then on top of that, you know, Visual Studio is something I guess most people here are somewhat familiar with. Um, but also, there's a set of Eclipse, tools for Eclipse as well. For those people that are interested in that, Windows Azure 4e.org provides this environment for um, Eclipse and uh, specifically for Java and for PHP. You don't have to use those tools, but you know, it's, it's one way of getting started if those, that's an environment that you're interested in. And as I say, you can put you know, pretty much whatever runtime you want, as long as it runs on Windows. Um, you can put it on there. The one caveat of putting your own runtime on is you have to manage that runtime, as opposed to something like ASP.NET today where we, we manage that automatically. And by manage, I mean we can update it automatically, make sure the latest version of the framework is on that set of infrastructure. We are looking, by the way, at putting these runtimes into the standard infrastructure, so for those that want it um, and want to, want to choose the version, a particular version, and we've put that in the system, then that's one of the things we're looking at for the future too. So, um, you know, a couple of ways of, uh, of using this, a couple of reasons why people will use it. Well, there are things like sort of infrastructure projects in, in large organizations where they want to connect perhaps an internal application to the cloud and have an external view, if you like, on an application so that people on the internet perhaps can access it. And that uses integration services and uh, the ability to do things like have, you know, Active Directory authentication through to an on-premise application. But then there are you know, things like Interaction. You have a, a framework called Game Shaper, which is a, a social network game infrastructure. And, and recently, just before Christmas, they published Coronation, which is the official application of Coronation Street. And it's a, I guess it's a classic usage of, a cloud, of cloud infrastructure because you can build the application you know, on a set of machines without using any network technically. Um, you can test it on one or two machines in the cloud, and then when you know, ITV advertises to their 10 million Coronation Street viewers, um, you, you put a few more machines up there waiting for, for users to come along and use the application. So the idea, of course, scale as you use. We're kind of very familiar with this idea with the notion of cloud nowadays, but that certainly exists inside Windows Azure. You pay for what you use. You, you want one node, you want a thousand nodes. That's up to you. And you just literally pay for what you use and when you use it. 